Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Aniruddha. I am a YouTube physics faculty at Infinity Learn. So like I just briefed you a bit before this that we'll be doing a few experiments where you'll try to, my goal is to try to make you understand one of the concepts a bit better. Okay? So I'll require uh, involvement from some of you. So when I ask, do come up. I'll ask you to do some physical exercises. But if you'd come here and if the video turns out good, you would be on YouTube. So there's, there's a motivation for that. And another motivation is you would get these. So first up, like we start any activity, we do it with a little warm up. So who'd like to come up first for doing a little warm up? You, you want to come? So we will need to warm up a bit with a few exercises. If you want to do a warm up of your own, feel free to. Otherwise, here's the simple thing. So the goal here is that you need to stand, just stand maybe uh, roughly where that tile splits up, okay? And keep both your feet together. Keep both of them together. And I want you to reach out and take some chocolate. Okay, okay if you want more, take. You use, use this hand. You're like a... Okay, don't be greedy, do one thing. You've taken this, throw it out amongst your friends. Uh, everyone raise your hand so that she gives there. Dis distribute evenly, don't be, don't be selective about this. I'm going to be the, doing the same thing, but you have to keep your feet there, keep your feet uh, close, all right? And now I'm stepping a bit further away. Now your goal is to try to take some from this. Your feet should not leave the ground. Okay. What, are, you, are you extremely right-handed? I mean, the left hand is closer. You're turning your entire body. Come on. Try, try. Chala, make it a bit easier. Your left, your legs lifting. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much. Clap for her once. Okay, so the concept that we'll be dealing with today mainly involves this. We learn about balance. What brings about balance? Why she was falling down? We'll learn a bit more as well. So first up, anyone with any guesses why she was falling down when she tries to bend over? What's, what's the concept? You guys are from which standard? 11th or 12th? 12th. Well, so hopefully you've studied this. So what concept makes her fall? Force. This? Force. Force is, huh? Which side is the force? Left side. How is there the force towards the left side? I'm not pulling her. The force? Yeah, but the force is gravity, right? But gravity is acting on me even right now. Even when she was standing still, gravity was acting. So why, is, why wasn't she falling then? Okay. All right. So the topic, hopefully you have covered this. It's called center of mass. You've learned that center of mass. So here's how center. So before that, a quick review about what center of mass is. Like it says, it's like you have the entire mass. You have the entire object, no matter how big, how small, doesn't matter. You can assume that the entire mass of that object is at one single point. Right? A good example of this. <coughs> would be this scale over here. The scale is this long, it's 30 centimeters long, yet I can assume that instead of its mass being distributed over this entire length, it's at just one point, this 15 centimeter mark. How does that help us? Let's first understand what happens with point masses. This here, you'll get to, you'll, as I explain, you'll understand why she was falling over, all right? So first up, we have this, this is a point, there's some thickness to it, you can assume it to be a point itself. So you have this point here, and if I want to support this point with my hand over here, <coughs> with two fingers, where should my fingers be? It should be right below this, right? If I shift it to one side, what's going to happen? If I let this go now, fall. it will fall. Same thing if I shift it over to this side, it falls. Same thing applies for the concept of center of mass. By now that I can assume by center of mass that the entire mass is at one point, in order to support this, I only need to place my fingers right below the center of mass. I don't care how long it is, what the shape of it is. That is why if I want to support it, just like over here, I needed to support it right below the point. Here if I want to support it, I need to support it right below that point. 
If I shift to one side, what's going to happen? It falls. And it falls in the same direction as this fell. This also fell. If I put my hand this side, same thing happens over here. Now the explanation about why she fell. Normally the human body, where, where's the center of mass of the human body? Any guesses? It can't be at the feet. The center of mass is roughly, it's like the center of your body. It's around the navel. Okay? So the goal is, if you want to support your body, you need to support it right below your navel. When she's standing up straight, her feet are right below her navel. So she's balanced. She can stay like this. But now when she bends, her center of mass is shifting. At one point, her center of mass is going to go past that support point. The same thing that was happening here. Center of mass is here, her feet are these. As she bends, the center of mass shifts. As soon as it goes past the support point, she tends to fall over. Okay? Now you understand why you fell over? Anyway, but that's not the point. That is, okay, that's the very basic. We learn it a bit different because the center of mass and balance are very well related. So I'll show you two more examples about how center of mass and balance play together. Now, currently the World Cup is going on. How many of you are watching the World Cup? This, just three, four? Okay, you people are not that interested in football. Anyway, I have examples from football. Okay, anyone else? Uh, generally, we do it in a quiet place. So boys always, they like football, they go WWF, they give lots of examples. Anyway. The goal is this, generally in football, there are two types of players. There'll be one type of player who you'll see like, uh, like Messi is a very good example of that. Where, you know Messi, like everyone knows Messi. Even if you don't watch football, you'll all know Messi. Do you know Messi is playing in the World Cup final? Yes. yes, okay, great. So, there's players like Messi, and what is special about them is that when a defender pushes them, they don't fall that easily. Okay, they are said to have good balance. But on the other hand, so Messi has one property, what, what is that? He's short. Everyone knows, like Messi is shorter than me, he'd be around my shoulder. Okay? And on the other hand, you have tall players, like again, what's the second player you people know about, the most famous player? Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Right? Everyone knows Messi and Ronaldo. So Ronaldo is a tall player. And what happens with Ronaldo is that if someone pushes Ronaldo, like, it doesn't happen all the time, but still, if he's pushed, it's a lot easier for him to fall. So tall players have less balance, short players have greater balance. So we'll understand why that is, okay? So the first example is the tall player. In a tall player, the center of mass is higher up because the stone is heavier, it's higher up. So when I push it, if, even if I bend it a little, if I let it go, it's going to fall, right? Uh -huh. Even at this angle, it falls. But on the other hand, when you have a shorter player, someone with a lower center of mass, this cement at the bottom brings the center of mass down because the mass is concentrated at the bottom here. So for this, even if I bend it so far back, when I let it go, it's going to come back up straight. So why does this happen? Why does a higher center of mass makes you fall easier? Why does a lower center of mass give you more balance? You'll even see when people start to fall or if there's an earthquake, when people need more balance, they're being displaced, people generally bend down. They go down. Why? Because they want to reduce their height of their center of mass. So I'll explain to you exactly why that is the case. So let's assume there's one object here. Let's make it really tall object. And initially, we'll assume that it has a high center of mass. Let's assume it's somewhere around here. When it has a high center of mass, what happens is that now we just covered. When does a person fall over? When should this object fall? If I'm turning it. High center of mass when this point, so this is the last support point. If I'm bending it that side, this is the last support point. This is the height. So when this point, the center of mass crosses it, it's going to fall. That was what was happening for her when she was bending. Okay? So in order for this point, to cross this, it, it needs to go so far. If I'm bending it, this point needs to go till here. How much angle is required for it to turn? It's a very thin angle. So that is what was happening here. Even if I change the angle slightly, 
the center of mass has already gone past its stable point. That is why when I let it go, it's going to fall. Is this clear or do you want me to go over this once more? Do you understand the center of mass? This is the last stable point. If it crosses it, it's going to fall. But if the center of mass was lower, say over here, again, in order to fall, it needs to go up till here, this point, same point, it needs to cross that vertical line. But this time, in order to cross that vertical line, the angle that it has to be turned with is a lot greater. That is why when I take this and I bend it even this far, if the center of mass is here, the center of mass is still hasn't crossed it yet. So when I let it go, it's going to come back up. It's the same principle by which she was falling. It's the same thing about how football players fall when they're pushed. Why tall players have less balance, why short players have a greater balance. So now when you see a football match, you'll know why it happens. They'll tell you 90% of the time they'll fake it, they'll fall for the foul. But sometimes it's legit. So you know when it's legit. So generally, even though we assume center of mass is at the navel, a human body is not just the navel. Right? There's head, there's arms, there's legs. So all of these individually have their own center of masses. And they all combine, all the center of masses combine to create the center of mass at the navel. So I'll show you a way in which she can still keep her balance, she can still bend without falling. Okay? You have the remainder of the chocolates here. Keep your feet close. Okay? And this time, I want you to do the same thing. But there's no compulsion that you need to keep your right leg fixed. Okay? Now go ahead, take it. How would you do it? Lift that left leg. Ha. Huh. See, that's what I'm trying to get to. So what was she doing this time in order to bend? Her left leg is still at the point. That support point is still there. But this time she's able to bend. Why? Because when she bends, she can lift up one leg. What good does that do? Let's... Again, draw this out so that you understand a bit about how people balance themselves out. So like I said, human body, there's head, there's two arms. So suppose, for instance, I have an accident, my one arm gets cut off. That one arm will have its own center of mass. Okay? Now let's assume there's three parts. There's the head, there's the uh, arms, and there's the legs. Let's break it up. This is not a human body, but for... If, if your diagrams are really bad, this is how you draw a human body. Anyway, so now earlier what was happening? As she was bending, let's assume that the top part is moving. So as she was bending, the top part shifts to this side. And that is why the center of mass was, if the center of mass was around the navel, it was shifting past it and she was falling. But in the formula for the center of mass, in the formula for the center of mass, R was given by M1 R1. There's, there's three masses here. Plus M3. Okay? So these were how it was happening for the three masses. So what this formula, like forget the bottom part. Bottom part is useless, that's just averaging out. The top part is what matters. And according to the top part, like what was happening here, the center of mass is higher up. Why? Because there's two masses here. There's the stone, there's the bottle. The stone is heavier, the bottle is lighter, so the center of mass is towards the stone. Same way, there's a dependence of distance. So if I have, both of them are roughly the same mass. If I hold this closer, this further away, the center of mass would be towards this. Oh, sorry, it would be towards this, right one, pardon me. So the distance also matters. Now, why am I telling you all this? Why am I going through all the theory and everything? Because this explains why she had to lift one leg in order to stretch on the other side. Because over here, when she moves her hands to one side, the center of mass shifts, it was crossing that point. So she was falling. So what, should, what did she do in order to negate that effect? She moved one leg to the other side. If a hand is going that side, she shifts one leg to the other side. So this point shifting was dragging the center of mass over here. 
Now because she le shifts the leg to this point, it drags back the center of mass to the center, which means even though her one hand is stretched out, because the other leg is out on the other side, her center of mass still stays right above her left feet. That is why she was able to balance herself. You will even see this, like this I don't even need to tell you with hands and legs. If you have ever tried to walk on a thin narrow wall, okay, then or if you have a lot of difficulty or even sometimes when you are in heels and you are walking, you will see that you keep your hands out, right? You keep the hands out when you are falling, you adjust your hands. What are you doing? Your hand is one mass, this hand is one mass. When your center of mass starts to fall on one side, you draw this hand in, you stretch this hand out. Why? Because you want the center of mass to shift back over to the other side. Even you'll see tightrope walkers. You know tightrope walkers? Nowadays in circus, you don't have a lot of circuses. But in circus, you have tightrope walkers. They sometimes do it with their hands, but in order to help them to distribute the mass further, they'll sometimes do it with a big stick. Because they want to, so if they start to fall on one side, they shift the stick to the other side so that the mass shifts there, the center of mass shifts back. All right? So I hope these concepts, so these were the three concepts. My goal was to tell you how center of mass relates to balance. You only learn center of mass in system of particles. It seems like you only do it to solve questions. That's not it. There's so much about stuff about your life, in your own life. You can find applications to this. So keep relating. The great thing about 11-12 physics, so this I'll tell you, the great thing about 11-12 physics is that almost everything you study can be seen all around you. Okay, so the best way to practice physics, I'm telling you, you all are preparing for JE, JE, NEET, you're a NEET batch, okay. So NEET, JE, anywhere you need physics, so that's the way I studied. I am from IIT Kharagpur, the way I got through is that the best way to practice physics is to not do it in sums, go out on the street, you see something happening, figure it out. That is the practice that your competitors are not doing. That is what can give you the difference. All right. With that, thank you so much for participating. Thank you especially for participating. And uh, all of you for being such a good sport. I have another packet of chocolates that Namrata ma'am will distribute at the end.